Good morning, everyone. We're about to start. I draw your attention to your cell phones, please. Please attend to your cell phones. Also, we have two baskets, one at the west door and one to the front. You can put your offering in now or at the appropriate time. We ask John and Peter to come now to do the remembrance. Good morning, family. This is a short remembrance of our mother, and, and it's in two parts. I'll start first. Alison Hyacinth Hall was born in the Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago on the 22nd of August, 1930. There she attended Bishop's High School, and upon graduating, set sail for the bright lights of London to pursue studies in nursing at St. Helier's Nursing School between 1950 and 1954, where she earned her qualification in, um, as a registered nurse. While at nursing school, she met her future husband, John Ambrose at a social evening arranged by the British Council. I'm told these are, that this was an occasion where um, the colonial masters would teach the natives the fine art of tea drinking and dancing. Ali returned to Tobago upon finishing her studies where John pursued her and proposed marriage, and she accepted. This opened a whole new adventure as she then relocated to Jamaica, where Peter and I were raised. As children, mom was involved in our lives, very involved. She took us to school in the mornings as pub public transport was not reliable. And she was of that generation that accepted no excuse for children not going to school. Book learning was not the only item on the curriculum, as she quietly imposed a sense of propriety and discipline. Ali insisted that we make our beds before leaving home every morning. If not, she would strip them and dump the sheets on the floor, resulting in even more work to put it together again. Hence, we learned to make beds with the sheets very tight and then gently sit between them at at bedtime. Upon waking up, we would slip out of the sheets and gently smooth them out. She also tried to instill, instill punctuality by driving through the gate promptly at 7.30 to get to North Street, Kingston College, for 8 o'clock in the morning. Many a morning I would be running through the gate to catch her, as she would say, I'm not making your brother late on your account. In another instance, while in prep school, I recall bringing home another child's geometry set. And she quite sternly told me, take it back and never ever bring anybody, anybody's belongings home. That lesson has stuck with me, as I'm very conscious about borrowing pens and stuff like that, and making sure that I return them. Ali was there when it came to extracurricular activities, whether swimming training or extra lessons, and never complained. 
Since her passing, a number of persons have quite unsolicitedly told me that your mother always had kind and encouraging words. Ali was an avid reader on a wide range of topics, whether in books or magazines. I can still remember her collection of National Geographic and later on the Smithsonian magazines. It became quite frustrating to her when she could no longer read. She had quite diverse interests. Sometime during our high school, mom took up Chinese cooking before it was popular. I don't recall this being too popular with dad because he was a grown provision man. But she persevered. Another lifelong interest of hers was the love of flowers. And she even went as far as taking lessons in Ikebana. She went on to become a member of the St. Andrew Floral Association, where I was told she was the life of the party. This association resulted in several trips abroad to places as diverse as Japan, South Africa, Scandinavia, and mom with Auntie Audrey in tow would take full advantage of these opportunities. She also had an avid interest in history and joined the local uh, Georgian Society where she went on many historical trips around the island. When Peter and I left the, the nest, one would sometimes travel with dad on his trips to conferences. When her surviving sister Audrey retired, they decided that they would take a major trip every year. I recall her relating one trip where they went up the Amazon River in a dugout canoe um, six inches above the water line. This is what I was told. Their last trip should have been to Beijing, but unfortunately that was the year with the disturbances at the Tiananmen Square. Ali was very close to her family, the Armstrongs of Tobago. And in recent years, when they could no longer travel, she and Audrey would speak on the phone daily. They kept each other updated on the happenings with various family members and friends. I guess you could describe it as the family sister of our generation. Because it kept our generation fairly current with the events of each other's lives. That link is now broken. She embraced her nephews and nieces as her own children, along with the children of many family friends. She always had an interest in what was going on in their lives and always encouraged them. When mom came to Jamaica, she didn't know anyone and was without any close family. This situation soon changed as she gathered a circle of friends whom to this day are like family. She was loyal to them and they to her. Some even had roots in, in Trinidad and Tobago. These friends were her inner circle, her rock and her support. Mom was a soft, sweet soul. Rest in peace, Alex. Mm -hmm. Like perpetual shame. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I want to thank you for coming to this remembrance of my mother, Alison Hyacinth, a wife, a mother, a sister, and an aunt to many. Known as Alison, 
Aunt Ellie, Aunt Alice, and Mrs. Dr. Hall to some and all. Mommy, I will miss your sweet voice. From the time I can remember myself as I entered the house as a young boy, coming home from school until now as a grown man, when you would ask in that melodic voice, what did you bring for me? My response would be, where is the cake? And we would start laughing. Uh, as a young boy, my mom, cake making at Christmas time was the best. That was when I was introduced to the sweet smell and taste of Jamaican rum. You see, I got to lick the cake batter off the spoon. The batter was mixed with rum infused uh, fruit mix. The fruit mix was soaking in rum for a whole year in the brick big brown medicine bottle in the kitchen closet. She would say, boy, don't get too excited, as one lick of the spoon is all you get. I had to sneak and clean the spoon. Uh, basically, she was teaching us, Brother John and I, to moderate our behavior in terms of uh, not being too greedy in our actions. Oh yes, I miss the cake, and I miss the cooking. And as, uh, as much as I would fuss about not getting the right piece of chicken, she would tell me at the time, you are the smallest, so you get the small piece. I guess all she was doing at that early stage of my life was teaching me to temper my behavior and actions. Manners and respect were a big deal for her. It was good morning, good night, and as even-tempered as she was, I was not allowed to cross her. And uh, John mentioned a few friends of hers that were her core, and um, I can remember being told by her as we got out of the car when we visited them not to misbehave. Uh, interestingly enough, I'm, I'm going to give you this story. Uh, the last time I got some uh, spanking from her, I was approximately 13 years old. I thought since I was a little taller than her, probably about half a head, that I could be uh, testing my will with her. She asked me to stay at school as she would be picking me up. And I looked at my watch and I said to myself, she's taking too long. I took the bus home, the infamous JOS bus, and uh, was relaxing at home. And she returned and asked me, where was I? I said to her, you took too long to come for me. And I took the bus home. She said, get the belt. Mark you, that was my belt that I had to get. After that traumatic experience, she told me, one, you wasted my time, two, you did not listen to me, and three, you disrespected me. As you can imagine, those actions were never again repeated by me. She is, uh, was a great guide in my life, taught me to be humble and to be respectful of all around me. But with that, she loved me, and she loved her boys, John and I, unconditionally. Mom was great to everyone. She loved her siblings. She, was, she loved and was loyal to her husband, Dr. John. She expressed great love and admiration to her daughter-in-law, Peter Rose. She loved her nieces and nephews, even the ones she adopted. She would never raise her voice to them, just constantly offering encouragement to do better in their lives. She lived up to her birthday month, which was in August, and was a lioness who protected her pride. She had great, great love for her granddaughters, Rachel and Elizabeth. 
and was very affectionate to them. Always had good words to each of them in whatever endeavors they were doing. Rachel, she would not see as much, uh, but was always very proud of her when I spoke to her about what Rachel was doing. There were times when I would be critical of Rachel in some of our conversations over the phone, but mom would always tell me, be grateful, Rachel is a kind and loving child. As you all know, she was born in the little country of Tobago. This little lady, in her quiet way, put one of her ideas into the annals of history. And there was no outward gloating by mom. That was her nature. Just being casual as a warm Caribbean breeze. Sometime back in 1970, there was a discussion at the dinner table between listening to the TV news about honoring the Reverend Percival Gibson, one-time Anglican Bishop of Jamaica. And my dad was mulling how to honor the bishop. So in her forthright way of saying things, she said to dad, you go to the Penn Relays in, Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on many occasions. Why don't you suggest to the KCO Boys Association to have a similar event in Jamaica and call it Gibson Relays to honor the man? There you have it, folks. This 50-year-old event brought forth by Aunt Ali is still thriving and going strong nationally and internationally. When you watch the Gibson Relays from now on, give a nod to mom, Mrs. Dr. Hall. Mom, uh, you are now at peace. Part of God's army and uh, one of her sidekicks. I will miss you. We will see each other again. I love you always.
Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, say the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our sister Allison for burial. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence Pray to God, our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise her to perfection in the company of the saints. I bless the body of our sister Alison with holy water that recalls her baptism of which St. Paul writes. All of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death we were buried together with him so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness to his death, so shall we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection. On the day of her baptism, Alison was incorporated into Christ. On the day of Christ's coming, may she be clothed with glory. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Alison. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In their boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until, by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh. 
return of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that your servant, Addison, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Word of God written in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21 to 26. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His, his mercy never came to to an end. They are new every morning. Great to your to your faithfulness. The Lord is your portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the souls that seek, it is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the word. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
A reading from the Word of God written in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 2 to 7. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning, crying, and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be their, my children. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the Word of God, written in St. John's Gospel, from chapter 14, verses 1 to 6, and verse 27. Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that you go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, do we know where you are going? How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O Lord, illuminate our thoughts with the light of your word. O Lord, touch our eyes that we may see you. Touch our ears with your wounded hands so that we may hear you. O Lord, touch our hearts with your wounded hands so that we may feel your presence. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come today to celebrate the life of our dear sister Alison, a wife and mother and a devout and faithful disciple of Jesus. We have come to celebrate life that has its origin in God, the one who is the creator and who bestows the gift of life. But we have come also as a Christian community, the Paschal community, the community of the resurrection that celebrates the one who has defeated the enemy of humankind. So we celebrate Alison's life. She gave of herself to family and she bequeathed to her family those values which would enable them to live a life of discipline 
on a life in which they would be respectful of sacred values. And those values are rooted in the Christian faith. So she lived the faith. She did not talk the faith. She lived the faith. She walked the talk. And so we celebrate one who was able to live that faith as she understood it and as she shared it with her family and friends. As we reflect on the word from Gospel of John, there is something that really stands out of a mother who cares for her children and her family, her husband and friends and giving clear instructions to a child and a child who takes the initiative to go against those instructions and yet she insisted that in the rejection of her instructions it was one of what? Disrespect. Now when a child learns that from a very early age it will have a profound impact on their character and will stay with them for life. I recall having such a similar experience at age 11, right after entering Fortis on North Street. And in that case, I got a hiding from my father. I have not forgotten the incident. Living the faith means that we are disciplined in understanding what is necessary for us in living that faith. We now find ourselves in an environment in which is totally inimical to what we are created to be. Were we created to live like this? Keeping each other at a distance. Were we created to live like this, covering half of our faces? Were we created to live like this, constantly sanitizing our hands? Were we created to live like this, to look at, look at each other with suspicion and fear? Yet Jesus says, do not be anxious. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Do not be anxious. Do not fear. But trust God the Father. That exercise of trust is one of the basic things. The opposite of trust is distrust and fear. I don't trust that you are safe, so keep far. Yet Jesus says, Trust in God the Father who cares and sustains. God the Father who has given us the breath of life. God the Father who sends the sunshine on the rain, regardless of who you are, regardless of race or religion, whether you're a sinner or a saint. The intent of the heart of God the Father is to sustain the gift of life for all living things. And the intent of God the Father is regardless of our human disposition to be self-centered and selfish, to be driven by our petty egos, God's response is to forgive. And that forgiveness is based on the heart of God, which is agape, that self-giving love regardless of our state, our transgressions and sins, God the Father's heart is always to embrace and forgive. It's a certain quality of love. It is not parental love. It's not friendship love. It's not that kind of intimate love of eros, philia, or storge, but rather 
it is agape sacrificial love that gives to the heart regardless of the response for even our parents when disrespected will respond in a particular way even friendship when feel disrespected and hurt will respond in a certain way even in relationships when disrespect, disrespected and hurt will respond in a certain way yet God's heart is responsive not that way but with embracing love even when in the face of rejection and revolt and so we see it in the epitome of Jesus Christ on the cross who says Father Abba Father forgive them them know what they might do forgive them them really understand what they might do that is the nature of the heart of God to forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive the response demands of us humility humility to accept with graciousness and gratitude that which we cannot earn and that which we do not deserve and to say thank you to say thank you to say thank you and in response forgive others and so Jesus taught us the one prayer that fits all beginning with Abba Patir Abba Father you are the creator and sustain and give up our life respect due to you respect due reverence all for you are the holy other and the source you reign for you are creator and we are finite your will and agenda is what must rule and run things not ours we must love our own way we must seek to desire your way for your way is for our well-being and our welfare as we forgive others for you have forgiven us the one prayer that fits all So we come to celebrate Alison's life. She lived life sustained by the presence of God as she shared the values that she had received from the faith. She lived it. It is a testimony to Alison's life. So though we grieve at this time, it is for us to celebrate that she rests in the paradise of God. She rests in the eternal paradise, in the sanctuary of paradise, from which Jesus said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradisos. So death for the Christian is not the end. And that's what we say in the prayer book of the church. In the prayer book of the church, this is what we say. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. For when our mortal body lies in death, there it is that we are prepared to be in the dwelling place of your eternal presence. So we celebrate that our sister was incorporated into Christ that she rests in the eternal paradise of the sanctuary of the glory of God for she too has been a disciple of Jesus the one who said I am the way 
the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me amen in the name of god father son and holy spirit amen In the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, O Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, our Father, that your Son, Jesus Christ, came to die for us. We thank you that you raised him from the dead for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. May we be strengthened in our faith that we may live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your Son and be ready when you call us to the fullness of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Allison's family. Be close to them in their loss. Console them in their grief and surround them with your undying love and your grace lord in your mercy hear our prayer. prayer we thank you for the gift of life and for the life of allison show mercy to the dying strengthen them with hope and fill them with the peace and joy of your presence lord in your mercy hear, hear our prayer, prayer. We commend all people to your unfailing love, that in them your will may be fulfilled. And we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. As our Savior taught us, so we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Father of all, we pray to you for Alison and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let life perpetual shine upon them. May she and all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen.
Let us stand for the commendation. Give rest to Christ, your servant, Alison, with your saints. With sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of humankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did your day when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, Yet even at the grave we make our song, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. We rest to Christ to your servant, and your saints. We are sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. Let us commend our sister Alice to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Deliver your servant Alice, O sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from every bond that she may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitation. We are with the Father and the Holy Spirit. You live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Saviour, we commend your servant Alison. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in life. Amen. In the paradise, may the angels lead you. At your coming, may the martyrs receive you and bring you into the holy city, New Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels receive you and may with you with Lazarus, who was once poor, have eternal rest. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>